Guys, thanks for tuning in. This is my sponsored ICO review of LWF. Let me start out by saying since this is a sponsored review, yes, I've been asked by the team to review this project and ICO, but I want to state that everything is of my opinion and it is based on my judgment of what I've seen in the past and the score and everything I say is unbiased and undetermined in any way. But also I want to stress that nothing that I say is actually a direct recommendation. Uh, I am not a financial advisor. Nothing I'm saying is, constitutes as financial advice. All right, so let's get to what this review is all about or what is LWF is really about. What caught my eye, uh, and I saw this about two months ago, uh, many of you guys are within the cryptocurrency space. You guys will probably remember this announcement from Redcoin. All right, so this was, you know, second and third week of December. Redcoin was basically a coin that has been stagnant forever. And they made this announcement that they partnered with LWF and Redcoin shot up 300%. And ever since then, it's been holding up a lot higher than before. Um, so I didn't know anything about LWF back in the day. I thought LWF was an existing company. I did not know that it was actually an uh, ICO company. But uh, so many of you guys probably heard of LWF before because of the Redcoin announcement, but maybe not. Um, I certainly had no knowledge before looking at the ICO um, today. All right, so what is LWF? All right. So they call themselves the first decentralized logistic platform in the world. But really, uh, after looking at what they're trying to do, I'm calling them kind of like the Uber of freight forwarders. OK, so what they're trying to do is really two parts. One is they're trying to leverage blockchain technology to create this um, this public ledger of records, basically. Um, a transparent, um, unhackable, unchangeable um, uh, uh, database of shipping records and everything that goes along with shipping in terms of costs and shipping times and uh, and um, you know whether or not something was delivered on time, uh, was delayed, uh, who was the shipper, who was the receiver, basically anything that goes with um, shipping or freight forwarding. Um, is going to be recorded in this public ledger, which is their blockchain platform. Okay, so that's first and foremost. But really, what they're trying to cater to is this P2P setup, just like Uber. How Uber is uh, kind of like the middleman uh, between um, drivers and um, passengers. Basically, LWF wants to be the middleman between shippers and receivers. They want to create this platform to make it so that anyone can become um, a shipper or a receiver, right? So if you want, if you're, um, you know, if you're interested in, let's say, making money, they're going to provide two different models for you to do that. One is you can actually sign up to the platform and become a shipper so that you, you know, in theory, they're going to have an app where you can check to see where you can go and pick up a package and then you can deliver it. Right. So that's one way. Another way is to actually become like a uh, like a storage, like say um, you're you become a regional hub of somewhere. So you can have packages shipped to you and then the receivers um, will actually come to your house or wherever your place of business and pick it up. So basically they're providing those two services. Um, and as a, a shipper, um, the whole point of WF LF is uh, in instances where you think it's too expensive to use like the UPS FedEx of the world uh, or USPS or any local uh, post service uh, or in situations where a vendor basically can't ship to where you're located at, that's where the P2P comes in. That's where you can get someone local to pick up the package from your house, which is super convenient, and deliver it wherever you want them to in a timely manner, in a cheap, cost-effective manner. So that's basically what LWF is. They're basically coming up with this public ledger to kind of stores all the information uh, that, that's, that has to do with shipping. 
and then they're going to provide this new platform for users to be able to use to ship items around the world or for users to become shippers themselves and actually make money by taking on packages and delivering them or by storing packages for other people to come and pick up. So that's basically the gist of LWF. Now, um, going through a web page, and we'll go through a few things. I mean, let me start out by saying I think the idea is a good one. I think the P2P setup now is definitely something that is very, very popular and highly successful, right? So I used Uber. A lot of people are familiar with Uber. But look at Alibaba. Alibaba is the same thing. Uh, Alibaba actually has no inventory on hand. They just help companies, manufacturers, and buyers connect. And that's what LWF is doing uh, or trying to do for shipping. All right. So um, right now they call their sale a TEC sale. Okay. So this is kind of like their, um, their ICO. Okay. Um, and going down, all right, we'll go, go to the white paper in a little bit. I wanted to go through, um, go through the web page a little bit. So I talked about the P2P freight forwarding. That's really uh, freight forwarding, direct logistics, um, parcel collection points. Those are the three things that I kind of talked about, you know, in terms of uh, what they're trying to do in this space and everything is done through the mobile app, which they're developing. All right. So um, this is kind of like an estimated volume, estimated price. How much um, things are so this is kind of their estimate right so this is not really um, not really something that um, is a hundred percent accurate I would say uh, so this is kind of like their whole spiel how everything works which is kind of cool all right um, let's see they are using a delegated proof-of-stake model right so that's a little bit different from proof-of-stake um, in terms of voting rights, you definitely have uh, more say in the delegated one and you can delegate your voting rights if you wanted to, those that are interested in that. Um, roadmap, okay, roadmap is definitely important. So um, they're gonna actually open up their mainnet is pretty soon, right after the TEC sale, okay? They're gonna actually deploy their mainnet, which is kind of interesting, that's extremely quick. And then they're going to be listed on exchanges and then they're going to open their foundation and the P2 and blockchain integration. All right. So it uh, looks like they're moving pretty quickly. All right. And then in terms of how uh, how many um, tokens they have in terms of total distribution and how they're going to use it. Um, it's actually I added this up. It's kind of funny. They don't list it out, but it's 100 million tokens, which is pretty low in these uh, today's day, day and age is mostly in the billions for most other ICOs. So they're in 100 million. Uh, you see that out of 100 million, they're selling uh, basically 73%. Okay, it's actually more because they actually had a pre sale. If you add it up, um, you're almost talking about almost 80% of the tokens being sold. That's enormous, enormous. Um, most companies that you see sell about 50% of the tokens. Some of them you might see up to 60, 65%. Some of the greedier companies only sell about 30, 35%. Uh, I have never seen a company where they're selling almost 80% of the available tokens. That is incredible. All right. And then they're saving some for advisors, the marketing, the team, and the bounties. Basically, uh, I don't know, you know, in terms of the team, right that's a very 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 small chunk but anyways out of the one out of what they're collecting mass majority of it goes to project development insurance marketing legal so that's all standard but this is pretty good pretty good all right so so far so good i like the idea i like the token distribution and allocation here's where it gets a little bit um i would say negative in terms of my eyes okay so the, obviously they have the team and I've looked through this team a little bit. You got the CEO and the founder, and then you got some people um, listed as a CTO, front end developer, you got a blockchain expert, you got senior advisors, you got some advisors, community managers, and so forth, okay? So looking at the founder, um, so I'm looking at, you know, what I'm looking for is if you're starting 
a company like this, right? Obviously, you're trying to look for cryptocurrency experience or in this case, logistics experience or shipping experience, anything that that deals with that. Right. So bef before uh, LWF, um, it looks like he was basically IT, more of IT infrastructure, I would say. Right. Uh, he started as assistant admin, help IT manager, help desk, web system administrator, system administrator. So, yeah, he's more or less on the system integration. I mean, system uh, infrastructure side. And then really, I don't see anything in terms of logistics or shipping or cryptocurrency experience. But, you know, to be honest, a lot of founders don't have cryptocurrency experience, so I can't hold that against them. But uh, I would have liked to seen some experience with logistics or freight forwarding. Um, so now you get to the CTO that's listed. Unfortunately, the CTO of the company um, doesn't even have a LWF listed. OK, um, but looking at his experience, he also came from an infrastructure background and it looks like uh, he founded this company in Italy. Um, uh, if I yeah, I didn't say it, but LWF is based in Italy. So most of these guys are Italy. Right. Um, and then you got founder so he looks like he's it infrastructure um and kind of like an entrepreneur because obviously he founded a few companies um and then you gotta look at you know some of these guys that are listed for developers and stuff like that uh you have this guy uh, unfortunately you know he's the blockchain developer but he has no experience listed it looks like he's straight out of college right now so uh, i don't know uh, how well versed he is at developing blockchain um, and then you got a couple other guys um, that simply don't have LWF listed at all. So this is why uh, this is why I think that the team is actually uh, um, the team is actually a negative right now from what I have seen. Um, you got a couple of visors. You got this guy that looks like he has 20 plus years of experience in the logistics field. But when I looked him up. Um, it, it could be that he does, but he doesn't have much on his LinkedIn, so I can't really verify other than um, he's been a sales manager for the last eight and a half years. Um, so the team is definitely, I would say, lacking at this point or at least unknown. Uh, there might be more to it than, you know, what what they put on LinkedIn. But, you know, obviously anyone that's conducting ICO really should be as transparent as possible and put as much information out there for people to to look at because really a lot of these ICOs from around the world you don't know much about the team or the project and you want to do as much research as possible so um, so these guys could definitely do a much better job of updating their LinkedIn to let people know what's going on um, but right now it doesn't look like they have um, a lot of experience in this field all right. So the good thing is, um, besides, you know, the team, it seems like they're really um, trying to make um, relationships with crypto com uh, cryptocurrency companies. So I, I looked this up under advisory board. OK, so they have two partners. They have uh, Oxcoin and Bitboost. And then you got the CEO of Oxcoin and the co-founder Oxcoin also listed. All right. So Bitboost looks like. They're a blockchain for e-commerce. Okay, both of these are very new companies. Um, they don't really have anything out yet, but they're still in the cryptocurrency space. And when you're in the cryptocurrency space, it's always good to make a lot of partnerships. So you guys, even though they're new companies, still you go through kind of the same challenges or different challenges and you can help each other. So Bitboost and Oxcoin definitely are new. Oxcoin is trying to become exchange. Um, they're kind of, kind of, it sounds like they're trying to become like a Coinbase where you can buy cryptocurrency using fiat. Um, so definitely two companies that's uh, um, up and coming. And then you got uh, Coinbar. Um, I've never heard of Coinbar, but Zcoin and also, of course, Redcoin, right? So Redcoin, obviously, I said at the beginning, this partnership, uh, it, it will utilize Redcoin. Um, and also Zcoin, I, I didn't know about that partnership, but that looks like that's a new thing. All right, um, going on, that's pretty much it. So let's look at, let's dive into the white paper. And the white paper is actually... A fairly easy read it's 18 pages um, you know it's, uh, it's pretty easy it's there's not that much in terms of technical details a lot of people that like to read technical details about the blockchain and how it works and how they go 
um, formulate it. That's not what this white paper is about. This white paper is more about the business side, the operational side, and they explain a lot of things in terms of what they're trying to do, like the freight forwarding, pickup delivery point, how they go do the express delivery packages using the mobile app. Um, they are using a delegated proof of stake and why that's important and why the blockchain is important. So it kind of goes through a lot of these things. Uh, the business model, um, and then kind of the economics, um, some estimated timeline, uh, estimated uh, revenue, uh, project um, overview, uh, kind of the TEC sale that we kind of talked about and um, and the team and how they're going to divide it. So definitely an easy read. Those of you guys that are interested in this project, you should definitely read through the white paper because this is... This won't put you to sleep, let's put it that way. There's a lot of white papers out there that kind of just 50, 100 pages that really puts you to sleep. Very technical, very detailed. Um, and the details is good, but you know this one is definitely one that you could sit through in 15, 20 minutes and knock it out. All right. So that's pretty much it to LWF. Um, let me go ahead and uh, summarize. Um, let's give a recap of this um here's my I lwf ico recap all right so pros um i call lwf the uber of freight forwarding or shipping the uber or shipping right so what they're tr really trying to do is leverage this p2t p2p uh setup just like uber in terms of freight forwarding or shipping so uh, they want to solve this problem where, you know, everyone in the world is pretty much locked to their postal service or UPS or FedEx. Um, and you know what, quite frankly, um, shipments are quite expensive. Sometimes they get lost. Uh, sometimes you don't have options because of where you live, right? So they would definitely want to utilize a P2P, P2P model because basically anyone around you, anyone in the neighborhood, anyone in the cities, can immediately sign up onto the platform and start shipping items, just like Uber, just like around the world now. You can pull up your app and find a find a drive, um, a, yeah, a, a driver that could come to you and drive you anywhere you want. Um, they want to do that for shipping. They want to be able to make it so that hey, you have a package, you want to ship it. Maybe you missed up the cutoff time. Maybe you don't want the cost, right? Maybe you want something that's instant within the day, right? You can pull up an app, schedule someone to come to your house, pick it up, and get it delivered. So I really like this idea. Um, I also like the idea in terms of how they go store everything into this. They're, um, they're basically blockchain platform in terms of storing all the details about the shipment, right? Who, who it's coming from, who it's going, the cost, the times, everything that that is involved with shipping, it's locked into the it's locked into the blockchain, and then you know it's definitely transparent, and and anyone that wants to look at the information can at any given time. All right, so I like what they're doing, and you know what that database they could definitely sell it to other people. Um, they don't have to just concentrate on the P2P. I know that's what they're doing now, but later on they could expand that out. All right, I do like they have a low token in supply, 100 million, and they're selling almost 80% of that in the pre-sale and the TEC sale, which is pretty awesome. I haven't seen that uh, actually any time before. Uh, I've never seen a number that high. Um, so I, yeah, definitely high percentage of tokens being sold. And I like the fact that they, they have a lot of partnerships with crypto companies, right? Even though they have a few with Bit, Bitboost and Oxcoin, but they also have it with Zcoin, Redcoin, um, so that, you know what? They're definitely talking with the community. They're definitely going out there. They're not just being siloed by themselves, which you see a lot of companies. A lot of companies feel like they know it all or, or they simply haven't reached out and they really have no partnerships outside of of anyone other than themselves so definitely uh, a good step in the right direction because they could definitely learn a lot from each other all right so those are the pros cons um this is not really toward them but uh only us accredited accredited investors only basically any ico that's going out there even though lwf is a utility token just like all these other ICOs i'm reviewing 
Um, if you're a U.S. citizen, Chinese citizen, Singapore citizen, unfortunately, um, you're not able to invest. If you're in the U.S., definitely you, you can only invest if you're accredited. If you're not accredited, you're not eligible for this ICO. Um, I mentioned during my review, the team is unknown. Okay, most of the team members don't even have L LWF listed in their LinkedIn, which again, maybe they just forgot to update it, but even so, that's a, that's a big con. Um, and then obviously the CEO of the company also doesn't look like he has much experience in logistics or shipping or freight forwarding, basically IT infrastructure background, all right? Uh, one of the things I thought of that really would be a con in this setup is geographical location. I could see how local, and within your state or maybe even you know a few hundred miles away from you is definitely doable but if you're talking about long distance okay especially overseas uh this p2p setup definitely will not work okay you're gonna have to depend on the carriers that ships overseas so i think uh, geographical location will be a big issue as they're expanding but that might not be a problem maybe they're not focused on uh international you know international shipments but it is gonna be a hindrance and then there are some things i like to see that i didn't see like the small details right like how are they gonna handle insurance um what if something gets delayed what if something gets broken right uh, maybe the person gets in an accident um, it doesn't get there or the person steals it. So there's a lot of small details like that that they don't really cover and they definitely need to if they're going to be in the shipping business. Also, what about costs? They don't really talk much about costs. I know that's going to be difficult to figure out, but you know what? If the cost is going to be um, vastly more to ship with a person rather than a carrier, that might be a hindrance, but of course, the urgency, the time, the convenience might make up for it, but really the cost is important and they don't really talk about the cost, uh, the cost structure or model. I don't think that I've figured out that out yet, but they definitely need to because the main net looks like it's gonna come very soon, all right? So overall, basically the pros and the, these are the pros and the cons, and what do I rate this project? Um, so overall, I rate it at 3.0 out of 5 stars. I, I would say this is right right in the middle, okay? Um, I think the pros are really good. I really like the idea. I think this is a good idea that that utilizes a P2P, P2P model that actually can expand outside the P2P model if they wanted to, right? The token sale is actually, uh, in terms of what they're doing with the token sale, the, dis the distribution they're selling is awesome. Um, they're reaching out with partners. That's awesome. But obviously I had to take out a few stars because the unknown team and their lack of experience. Okay. And the smaller details and geographical locations of uh, where shipments can be definitely go be a con in this. So that's why I really removed a couple of stars. All right, guys, that's it for my review of LWF. Thanks for tuning in and take care. Bye-bye become shippers themselves and actually make money by taking on packages and delivering them or by storing packages for other people to come and pick up. So that's basically the gist of LWF. Now, um, going through a web page and we'll go through a few things. I mean, let me start out by saying I think the idea is a good one. I think the P2P setup now is definitely something that is very very popular and highly successful right so i used uber a lot of people are familiar with uber but look at alibaba alibaba is the same thing uh, alibaba actually has no inventory on hand they just help companies manufacturers and buyers connect and that's what lwf is doing uh or trying to do for shipping all right so um right now they call their sale a tec sale okay so this is kind of like their um their ico okay um and going down all right we'll go go to the white paper in a little bit i wanted to go through um go through the web page a little bit so i talked about the ptp freight forwarding that's really uh freight forwarding direct logistics uh, parcel collection points those are the three things that I kind of talked about you know in terms of uh, what they're trying to do in this space and everything is done through the mobile app which they're developing all right so um, this is kind of like an estimated volume estimated price 
how much um, things are. So this is kind of their estimate, right? So this is not really, um, not really something that um, is a hundred percent accurate, I would say. Uh, so this is kind of like their whole spiel how everything works, which is kind of cool. All right, um, let's see. They are using a delicated proof of stake model. Right. So that's a little bit different from proof of stake um, in terms of voting rights. You definitely have uh, more say in the delegated one and you can delegate your voting rights if you wanted to. Those that are interested in that um, roadmap. OK, roadmap is definitely important. So um, they're going to actually open up their main net is pretty soon, right after the TEC sale. OK, they're going to actually deploy their main net, which is kind of interesting. That's extremely quick. And then they go be listed on exchanges and then they go open their foundation and the pt2 and blockchain integration all right so uh looks like they're moving pretty quickly all right and then in terms of how uh how many um tokens they have in terms of total distribution and how they go use it um it's actually i added this up it's kind of funny they don't list it out but it's 100 million tokens which is pretty low in these uh today's day day and age it's mostly in the billions for most other icos so they're in 100 million. Uh, you see that out of the 100 million, they have uh, more say in the delegated one, and you can delegate your voting rights if you wanted to. Those that are interested in that um, roadmap, okay, roadmap is definitely important. So um, they're going to actually open up their main net is pretty soon, right after the TEC sale. Okay, they're going to actually deploy their main net, which is kind of interesting. That's extremely quick. And then they go be listed on exchanges and then they go open their foundation and the pt2 and blockchain integration all right so uh looks like they're moving pretty quickly all right and then in terms of how uh how many um tokens they have in terms of total distribution and how they go use it um it's actually i added this up it's kind of funny they don't list it out but it's 100 million tokens which is pretty low in these uh today's day day and age it's mostly in the billions for most other icos so they're in 100 million. Uh, you see that out of the 100 million, they're selling uh, basically 73%. Okay, it's actually more because they actually had a pre sale. If you add it up, um, you're almost talking about almost 80% of the tokens being sold. That's enormous, enormous. Um, most companies that you see sell about 50% of the tokens. Some of them you might see up to 60, 65%. Some of the greedier companies only sell about 30, 35%. Uh, I have never seen a company where they're selling almost 80% of the available tokens. That is incredible. All right. And then they're saving some for advisors, the marketing, the team, and the bounties. Basically, uh, I don't know, you know, in terms of the team, right that's a very 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 small chunk but anyways out of the one out of what they're collecting mass majority of it goes to project development insurance marketing legal so that's all standard but this is pretty good pretty good all right so so far so good i like the idea i like the token distribution and allocation here's where it gets a little bit um i would say negative in terms of my eyes okay so the, obviously they have the team and I've looked through this team a little bit. You got the CEO and the founder, and then you got some people um, listed as a CTO, front developer, you got a blockchain expert, you got senior advisors, you got some advisors, community managers, and so forth, okay? So looking at the founder, um, so I'm looking at, you know, what I'm looking for is if you're starting a company like this, right? Obviously, you're trying to look for cryptocurrency experience or in this case, logistics experience or shipping experience, anything that that deals with that. Right. So bef before uh, LWF, um, it looks like he was basically I this right. Obviously, you're trying to look for cryptocurrency experience or in this case, logistics experience or shipping experience, anything that that deals with that. Right. So bef before uh, LWF, um, it looks like he was basically IT, more of IT infrastructure, I would say, right? Uh, he started as assistant admin, help IT manager, help desk, web system administrator, system administrator. So yeah, he's more or less on the system integration, I mean, system uh, infrastructure side, 
And then really, I don't see anything in terms of logistics or shipping or cryptocurrency experience. But, you know, to be honest, a lot of founders don't have cryptocurrency experience, so I can't hold that against them. But uh, I would have liked to seen some experience with logistics or freight forwarding. Um, so now you get to the CTO that's listed. Unfortunately, the CTO of the company um, doesn't even have a LWF listed. OK, um, but looking at his experience, he also came from an infrastructure background and it looks like uh, he founded this company in Italy. Um, uh, if I yeah, I didn't say it, but LWF is based in Italy. So most of these guys are Italy. Right. Um, and then you got like, founder. So he looks like he's IT infrastructure um, and kind of like an entrepreneur because obviously he founded a few companies. Um, and then you got to look at, you know, some of these guys that are listed for developers and stuff like that. Uh, you have this guy, uh, unfortunately, you know, he's the blockchain developer, but he has no experience listed. It looks like he's straight out of college right now. So uh, I don't know uh, how well versed he is at developing blockchain. Um, and then you got a couple other guys um, that simply don't have LWF listed at all. So this is why. Uh, this is why I think that the team is actually uh, um, the team is actually a negative right now from what I have seen. Um, you got a couple of visors. You got this guy that looks like he has 20 plus years of experience in the logistics field. But when I looked him up, um, it, it could be that he does, but he doesn't have much on his LinkedIn. So I can't really verify other than um, he's been a sales manager for the last eight and a half years. Um, so the team is definitely, I would say, lacking at this point, or at least unknown. Uh, there might be more to it than you know what what they put on LinkedIn, but you know obviously anyone that's conducting ICO really should be as transparent as possible and put as much information out there for people to to look at because really a lot of these ICOs from around the world you don't know much about the team or the project and you want to do as much research as possible so um, so these guys could project um, overview uh, kind of the TEC sale that we kind of talked about and um, and the team and how they're gonna divide it so definitely an easy read those of you guys that are interested in this project you should definitely read through the white paper because this is this won't put you to sleep let's put it that way there's a lot of white papers out there that kind of just 50 100 pages that really puts you to sleep very technical very detailed um, and the details is good but you know this one is definitely one that you could sit through in 15 20 minutes and knock it out all right so that's pretty much it to LWF um, let me go ahead and uh, summarize. Um, let's give a recap of this. Um, here's my I LWF ICO recap. All right, so pros. Um, I call LWF the Uber of freight forwarding or shipping, the Uber or shipping, right? So what they're tr really trying to do is leverage this P2T, P2P uh, set up just like uber in terms of freight forwarding or shipping so uh, They want to solve this problem where you know everyone in the world is pretty much locked to their postal service or UPS or FedEx um, and You know what quite frankly um, Shipments are quite expensive. Sometimes they get lost uh, Sometimes you don't have options because of where you live, right? So they would definitely want to utilize the P2P, P2P model because Basically, anyone around you, anyone in the neighborhood, anyone in the cities can immediately sign up onto the platform and start shipping items, just like Uber, just like around the world now. You can pull up your app and find a, find a, um, a, yeah, a, a driver that could come to you and drive you anywhere you want. Um, they want to do that for shipping. They want to be able to make it so that, hey, you have a package, you want to ship it. Maybe you missed up the cutoff time. Maybe you don't want the cost, right? Maybe you want something that's instant within the day, right? You can pull up an app, schedule someone to come to your house, pick it up, and get it delivered. So I really like this idea. Um, I also like the idea in terms of how they go store everything into this. They're, um, they're basically blockchain platform in terms of storing all the details about the shipment, right? 
who who it's coming from, who it's going, the cost, the times, everything that that is involved with shipping is locked into the it's locked into the blockchain and then you know it's definitely transparent and and anyone that wants to look at that information can at any given time all right so i like what they're doing and you know what that database they could definitely sell it to other people um they don't have to just concentrate on the p2p i know that's what you're doing now but later on they could um and the details is good but you know this one is definitely one that you could sit through in 15 20 minutes and knock it out all right so that's pretty much it to lwf um let me go ahead and uh summarize um let's give a recap of this um here's my I lwf ico recap all right so pros um i call lwf the uber of freight forwarding or shipping the uber or shipping right so what they're tr really trying to do is leverage this p2t p2p uh setup just like uber in terms of freight forwarding or shipping so uh they want to solve this problem where you know everyone in the world is pretty much locked to their postal service or ups or fedex um and you know what quite frankly um shipments are quite expensive sometimes they get lost uh, sometimes you don't have options because of where you live right so they would definitely want to utilize the p2p p2p model because basically anyone around you anyone in the neighborhood anyone in the cities can immediately sign up onto the platform and start shipping items just like uber just like around the world now you could pull up your app and find a find a dry um a yeah a, a driver that could come to you and drive you anywhere you want um they want to do that for shipping they want to be able to make it so that hey you have a package you want to ship it maybe you missed up the cutoff time maybe you don't want the cost right maybe you want something that's instant within the day right you can pull up an app schedule someone to come to your house pick it up and get it delivered so i really like this idea um, I also like the idea in terms of how they go store everything into this, their, um, their basically blockchain platform in terms of storing all the details about the shipment, right? Who, who it's coming from, who it's going, the cost, the times, everything that, that is involved with shipping is locked into the, it's locked into the blockchain. And then, you know, it's definitely transparent and, and anyone that wants to look at that information can at any given time. All right, so I like what they're doing. And you know what, that database, they could definitely sell it to other people. Um, they don't have to just concentrate on the P2P. I know that's what you're doing now, but later on they could expand that out, all right? I do like they have a low token in supply, 100 million, and they're selling almost 80% of that in the pre-sale and the TEC sale, which is pretty awesome. I haven't seen that uh, actually any time before. Uh, I've never seen a number that high. Um, so I yeah definitely high percentage of tokens being sold, and I like the fact that they they have a lot of partnerships with crypto companies right. Even though they have a few with Bit someone local to pick up the package from your house, which is super convenient, and deliver it wherever you want them to in a timely manner, in a cheap cost cost effective manner. So that's basically what LWF is. They're basically coming up with this public ledger that kind of stores all the information uh, that that's that has to do with shipping. And then they're going to provide this new platform for users to be able to use to ship items around the world or for users to become shippers themselves and actually make money by taking on packages and delivering them or by storing packages for other people to come and pick up. So that's basically the gist of LWF. Now, um, going through a web page, and we'll go through a few things. I mean, let me start out by saying I think the idea is a good one. I think the P2P setup now is definitely something that is very, very popular and highly successful, right? So I used Uber. A lot of people are familiar with Uber. But look at Alibaba. Alibaba is the same thing. Uh, Alibaba actually has no inventory on hand. They just help companies manufacturers and buyers connect and that's what lwf is doing uh we're trying to do for shipping all right so um right now they call their sale a tec sale okay so this is kind of like their um their ico 
Okay. Um, and going down, all right, we'll go, go to the white paper in a little bit. I wanted to go through, um, go through the web page a little bit. So I talked about the PTP freight forwarding. That's really uh, freight forwarding, direct logistics, um, parcel collection points. Those are the three things that I kind of talked about, you know, in terms of uh, what they're trying to do in this space and everything is done through the mobile app, which they're developing. All right, so um, this is kind of like an estimated volume, estimated price. How much um, things are so this is kind of their estimate right so this is not really um, not really something that um, is a hundred percent accurate I would say uh, so this is kind of like their whole spiel how everything works which is kind of cool all right um, let's see they are using a delicated proof-of-stake model right so that's a little bit different from proof-of-stake um, in terms of voting rights, you definitely have uh, more say in the delegated one, and you can delegate your voting rights if you wanted to, those that are interested in that. Um, roadmap, okay, roadmap is definitely important. So um, they're going to actually open up their mainnet is pretty soon, right after the TEC sale, okay? They're going to actually deploy their mainnet, which is kind of interesting. That's extremely quick. And then they're going to be listed on exchanges, and then they're going to 